Yeah, so this game's about people dying. I'm in a new position because this is the first time I've had the chance to play both the original and the remake of something. When I finished Persona 3 FES in 2019, I thought it was really good, and I got really sad because it was over. Now that I'm here playing Reload, I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same. But the thing is, if you, like a lot of the fanbase, started with the Persona 5, the original game may be the worst modern Persona game for you. And while I love 3, I've still always been in the 3, 4, 5 ranking camp. But then I heard 3 was getting remade. And I was like, hold on, if they fix everything, this could be the best one. But then I played it, and then something was off. I wasn't having as much fun as I expected. What was the exact problem? I had this weird feeling as I looked at the UI and the shift system and the other borrowings from the more recent Persona games mixed together with the old gameplay from 3, and I thought, this makes me want to play Persona 5. Wait a second. I think my problem is that it's just Persona 3 again. Oh. I just wanted Reload to be Persona 5 but with a Persona 3 reskin. Hold on. Why am I even thinking that? This is a remake of 3. It's not a substitute for Persona 6. And it can't be Persona 5 because the creators of Reload wanted to respect 3. So they tried to make it more accessible. But they didn't change too much because if they did, it wouldn't be Persona 3. It would be 3-2. So what we have instead is Persona 3 but with Persona 5 seasoning. They're not confidants, they're social links. They won't give you anything besides friendship and the power to summon Satan. In the original, you don't have palaces, you have Tartarus. And Tartarus has seen a few tweaks, but it's still Tartarus. Randomly generated, long hallways, and the exact same song over and over again. The team doesn't want to make palace Tartarus because it's like performing the Ginyu body swap, but in game form. Instead, to ease the pain, they added stuff to make the oldest in the modern Persona series approachable. First off, Tartarus, which now has destructibles throughout each floor and new consumables called Twilight Fragments, which can do three things. Open locked chests, let you use these clocks that randomly spawn to completely heal your party's HP and SP, or spawn a great clock to give two unused party members catch-up XP so that they're the same level as you. Okay, I have a bone to pick with the Grey Clock. I really liked it at first, but then I realized to keep all of your party members on the same level, you need to be able to consistently find this clock and use it, which means being subject to the bullshit random chance of opening chests just so you can spawn the clock. And then after you found it, you can only use it on two of the eight characters you have, which means you have to find it again to keep everyone in the same level. I've spent hours trying to farm Twilight Fragments just so I could open shitty chests that have nothing useful in them, just so I could use the Great Clock. And before you ask, I tried save scumming to activate the random chance for the clock to spawn, and it does not work. Which makes me theorize that there is a phantom threshold to be able to spawn the Great Clock. Why? <laughs> Keep in mind, this is only because I have the primal urge to keep my party at the same level. So, I love the Great Clock, but also, fuck the Great Clock. It's easier to farm the super boss at the end of the game than it is to find this shit. Anyway, moving on. There's the baton pass system from Persona 5 that's called Shift now because 3 is a darker game, I guess, and they want it to be cleaner? I, I don't know. That lets you give turns to another party member so that you can knock down enemies even faster, which Atlas needs to keep till the end of time. This is combined with the new dash that just lets you ambush enemies for free by just hitting them, lets you clear fights really easily. And also the fact that there's even a dash in the first place is really nice because in a procedurally generated dungeon with big ass hallways, you definitely want something that makes you move even a tiny bit faster. Then there's also the brand new theurgy system, which is basically a limit breaker Z move, so instead of spamming attacks and occasionally healing against bosses, you can just one shot everything instead. But that's only... Tartarus. There's also the social sim, and the decision to keep all the social links exactly the same kind of gets me because if you don't know, while Persona 3 has a lot of good social links, there are a few that are slightly bad. We have your standard, kind of forgettable classmate social links that for some reason did not change to the male party members, and then we also have the egregious guy who shits himself, scams little children, and 
tries to bring you into a cult for 10 ranks. Igor, why? Well, since they didn't change it, I guess that means that the Gourmet King is essential to the Persona 3 experience. Another thing I found weird is that they kept the three social stats, but then I'm pretty sure that they gave the stat increases the Persona 5 rates, so they level up in half the time. But for this change, I can kind of see why, because Reload gives you new content to interact with during free time. There's the Link episodes, which are social links with the Guy Sees members that were neglected but can't be called social links, but are practically exactly the same because confident abilities don't exist yet. They're pretty good. Dorm activities at night that give Sees members new abilities. Character says, that ass better not crack under pressure. They're also pretty good. You can now walk the dog. That, I think that speaks for itself. There's also new story events that take up time. But the fact that you actually don't have to spend time to increase your social stats makes it way easier to see everything. On my first playthrough, I managed to see nearly everything except for the last three ranks of Kenji's social link, which I wasn't upset about. Just follow the rule of less available, hang out more, and if a social link can rank up, don't do anything else. It's still harder to max all the social links in one run than it is in Persona 5, but it's definitely much easier than it was in the original. But the thing about this change is that after you max your stats, the city becomes devoid of any variety, and you just end up spamming social links over and over again. Where's my Mega Beef Pole Challenge? My Big Bang Burger? My darts? My fishing? Especially near the end game, because evenings just become grind Tartarus or use the arcade to max your Persona stats because you should have done everything else. All the things they changed and all the things they didn't change, I really don't know how to feel about it. Because on the one hand, they could have changed certain things that were very obviously not that good. But they didn't. But a few bad apples doesn't ruin the bunch, and I think the Reload team knows that. 3 is an amazing game even with its flaws, and staying faithful, even if it means keeping stuff like that in, well I can kinda of fuck with that. And even though I do fuck with it, it's still worse than 4 and 5. 5 has better gameplay, and 4 is just a fucking vibe. But there is one thing that 3 does better, and that's the story. Here's the story, there's an extra hour in the day after midnight called the Dark Hour, and during the Dark Hour, a big tower called Tartarus shows up. Everybody thinks, Wait a second, this shouldn't be there. So, a bunch of school kids, the Specialized Extracurricular Extermination Squad, which is us, want to remove it because we're the only ones that manifested JoJo stands or whatever. But the thing is, I've lied to you, and I actually don't care about the story. What I actually care about is the theme of the game, which is people dying. Are you afraid of dying? Too bad, it's going to happen anyway. That is the message of Persona 3. The opening moments of the original game tells you in bright, bold text that you are going to die someday. The song is called Burn Your Dread, and I might be stupid, but for the longest time I had no idea what that meant. I just never tried to understand it, but when I was playing through Reload, I felt like something was dawning on me. The best characters in this game lead kind of shitty lives. The MC is an orphan being tossed from place to place, Yukari's parents… well one's dead and the other one's a deadbeat. Junpei wants to be the man, but realizes he'll never be. Fuka leads an empty life and gets bullied at school. And the rest of C's is extreme spoiler territory. But then you get into the social links, and it becomes even more prevalent in the best of them. We have Maiko, who's a grade school whose parents are getting divorced, and if you really wanted to, you could just make it worse. We have Mitatsu, who's an alcoholic monk whose wife and child left him. We have Hayase, who's a rising track athlete. We can't go pro because his family will definitely starve if they do. And a 19 year old diagnosed with a terminal disease with not even a year left to live. It's all pretty bleak. And as you spend more time with them, you realize that for the most part, their situations don't suddenly get any better. Even though you're the protagonist, you play most of the social links as a bystander in their lives. You can't magic away the problem like in Persona 5. You just have to watch as they waste away. in times like these uh, when it's hardest to be alone I've lost sleep from the pain and anxiety of my illness before but I suppose I'm not doing my health any favors like this I don't want them to get a divorce mom and dad must hate me exhaustion since she works from morning till night damn it it's all my fault and my mom She's trying to leave. She says we can't afford the medical bills. God damn it! Why can't I do anything? I'm useless. I'm just another one of her problems. 
When it comes to the first few ranks of the social links, they mostly consist of them yapping to you about how horrible their life is. Then after that, they realize that their lives are indeed shit, and they do something. Not to sound dramatic, but I want to do it to protect my family. They don't wait around for answers. They take action. Look at Akinaris, for example, the young man diagnosed with a terminal illness. He knows that no matter what he does, he's going to die soon. Faced with that realization, he wonders if it was even worth being born. He feels isolated from everyone. But with that question in mind, he decides that he wants to write a children's story. Not because we as the player pushed him to do so, just because he wants to. All while his condition slowly deteriorates. He doesn't suddenly find a cure, and as the player, we don't become his sole reason for existence. He just starts to think that maybe his life doesn't need some profound meaning. Maybe his life wasn't that complicated, and he just needed something simple. Then I got to the ending of the game, and I actually wasn't as sad as I thought I'd be. There were waves of post-game depression, but getting to the title screen, I was just sort of filled. I ended up watching the opening to reload again, and I finally got what Burn Your Dread meant. Everyone dies, even if you're afraid of it, you'll die someday, and eventually you'll feel dread. But you shouldn't let that hold you back. Our time is limited, so instead of worrying about how or when you're going to die, just live. Live your life. Choose to do things that matter to your life. Burn the dread that comes from death and use it as a fuel to motivate you to live your life freely. It's a message that hits harder than 4 and 5s do, at least for me. I still think Persona 3 Reload is the worst of the modern trio, but honestly, being able to play it again has given me a new perspective on the game, and makes me pretty excited about ReFantasio now. But Persona 3 will always be the game that leaves the biggest mark on me after it's over. I don't get the same post-game depression as I do from beating 4 and 5. I just feel completely satisfied. Persona 3 Reload is a game with a few flaws, but it's still a really special game for me, because every single time I boot it up, I'm reminded of the message it tries to convey.